my channel, it is your girl, Dutchie! <laughs> Heck yeah it is. Y'all, I haven't worn a beanie for like the longest time and I understand that that is my MO. Um, but hi, she's back and with a wet, messy half bun. Cool! She's quirky, you know. So, as you guys probably already saw, judging by the title of this video, today I'm going to be reacting to the Am I a Lesbian Master Dog. Oh, there's a dog out there and he's by himself! Hey, oh no! Hang on. Oh good, the owner came. And for those of you who are sitting there like, Yo Dutchie, what is this? Am I a lesbian master doc you speak of? And I actually wasn't aware that this master doc existed either until a few weeks ago when I watched Elena Joy's video on reacting to it. So there you go. So basically the Am I a Lesbian Master Doc has been created to help people differentiate between their attraction to men, like actual attraction, and compulsory heterosexuality. I know. Yikes. Now for those of you who are unaware of what compulsory heterosexuality is and all of the intricacies of it, I actually filmed an entire video on it a few weeks back. I'll pop the link in the description if you would like to. I will touch on it briefly because the master doc, that's the first thing it touches on, so I will explain what it is. But yeah, if you want a full detailed video on what it is and how it's affected people and how it's ingrained into our society, then go ahead and watch that. But if not, I will read a little section from the master doc which does give a brief explanation of what comp het is. So basically I'm making this video to not only react to it but also to learn a little bit more about my attraction to men and my attraction to women and my feelings and thoughts and all those sorts of things. Dive a little bit deeper because your girl is all about that because I know personally I have definitely been affected by comp het in more ways than one and I feel like a lot of us have. But I'm also filming this video today in hopes to share this with all of you and perhaps provide some helpful answers and explanations to how you've been feeling or thinking about things or your sexuality. Maybe you're sitting there and you're fully 100% confident in your attraction to women, but you often question your attraction to men. As stated previously, you might be well aware of your attraction to girls or women, but are you really attracted to men the way you think you are? Are they really part of your attraction and sexuality? Or has comp het played a massive role in making you think and feel that way, when in reality, you're just a lesbian? I don't know. This video is certainly not intended to discredit any sexualities other than lesbianism. That is not the case at all because I myself am a valid bisexual. I'm confident in saying this and although I probably will learn some things from this document, I believe truly and wholeheartedly that I am valid in saying that and my feelings are valid and attraction is valid. I know what my attraction to women and I know what my attraction to men means to me. However, that's not to say that some people take like Elena Joy, for example, beautiful, beautiful girl, who genuinely, genuinely believed that she was bisexual for many, many years. I can leave a link to her video, it's this one here, explaining it, because obviously she explains it much better than I. She was engaged to a guy that she'd been dating for ages and like literally about to get married and then realized this wasn't it, sis. Like it was not for her and realized she was a lesbian. And in that video, a lot of people, she described comp het, but she'd never actually heard of it. And then all of her subscribers and followers and whatever brought her attention to the fact that comp het had been pushing her ideals and thoughts and feelings about still being attracted to men, when in reality, she wasn't. She was just feeding into comp het. But in saying this, and she felt like she had to mention this as well, it wasn't tapping into the whole bisexuality is a phase and it's something that people go through and it's not a true sexuality. That's what she was afraid of people saying and I can see why and I suppose for her it was. She found comfort in the label of bisexuality because she knew she was attracted to women and all these things but she also had a great boyfriend and a great life right so like yeah she was bi and was unaware of her true sexual identity for many years and that's completely okay and I think that's something we really need to normalize. We need to normalize just because you come out as something once or label yourself as something once because you truly wholeheartedly believe that's what you are and then later realize you're something else. People shouldn't be ridiculed for that. People shouldn't be hated on for that or told that you're a fake or a phony or like it was a phase for you because for some people bisexuality is like other things may be but the actual sexuality itself 
is not a phase. I'm a valid bisexual and if anyone tells me that it's a phase, that won't fly, sis. But please do not discredit our whole identity because that happens to some people. It's completely fine. It happens. Like, I'm so glad she's happy now in her true identity. She is actually flourishing. I love it. Okay, so with that big disclaimer out of the way, let's get into it. So, in short, what is compulsory heterosexuality? So I've taken this straight from the lesbian master doc and paraphrased it a little bit. So basically, Comphet is the idea that being straight or fitting within the two binary genders and having attraction towards the opposite gender is the default. E.g. being a woman and being attracted to men or being a man and being attracted to women is seen as normal and what we should all strive for. And this is something that is taught to us and almost ingrained in us from a very young age through society, through TV shows, movies, stories, books, poems. Comphet is literally everywhere, everything and everywhere. Furthermore, Comphet can make figuring out your sexuality a very confusing time. Let's go through the master doc, shall we? I'm just gonna grab it up here on my laptop. I can put a link to it in the description box as well if you wanna read through it. The first bit is literally what is compulsory heterosexuality. So I just paraphrased that a little bit for you guys, but that is basically what it says. How do I know if I'm a lesbian? If you're questioning if you're a lesbian, it's way more important to ask yourself if you can be truthfully happy with a man than if you're attracted to them. Ask yourself if you can have healthy, fulfilling relationships with men and actually want to be with them. You can be attracted to men and not know if you are because of compulsory heterosexuality and it doesn't mean that you want to be with them. Many lesbians still struggle with comp het even when they know they don't want men. Whoa. If you love women but feel fake about it, just remember that those feelings are the product of a patriarchal society which has conditioned you to believe the false idea that, that you are defined by your ties to men. Oh, that's eye-opening. Then in the next section here we have the like excuse or comment, but I like fictional men slash male celebrities. And this is a question I get from you guys a lot, which is another reason as to why I'm making this video today. But a common question I receive from you guys is, I know I'm attracted to girls, I want to date girls, but I still find guys attractive. Does this make me bi or am I gay? And this is what we're about to cover. Lesbians are allowed to like male celebrities and fictional characters. It's usually a symptom of comp het. Male celebrities slash fictional characters are completely unobtainable crushes and thus it allows the lesbian in question to distance themselves from men. It also says, even if the attraction to male celebrities slash fictional characters is not an effect of compulsory heterosexuality, it's not fair that straight women can have girl crushes and straight men can have man crushes without anyone telling them they can't be, aren't straight anymore. So the reverse should not be applied to lesbians. And this is so true, I cannot preach that enough. How many straight girls that you know, or straight guys, say, oh my god, woman crush Wednesday as a girl, or I hear straight men appreciating other men or other male celebrities and their attractiveness all the time, and it does not mean that they are homosexual or bisexual or, or would date them. You can appreciate that someone is attractive without being attracted to them. And the master doc goes on to talk about this later. But like, just because you find someone hot, doesn't mean you want to bone them. Doesn't mean you want to get married and have kids with them. Yeah? Which the master doc then goes into, but I think I've liked men before. This is where it says, you can identify as a lesbian if you've liked men in the past, but no longer are attracted to men or want to pursue relationships with them. Lots of lesbians have dated or had genuine relationships with men before realizing that they were lesbians and that doesn't make them any less of a lesbian. Preach. If you don't care about men or would no longer like to be with them, you can be a lesbian now. It's a now identity. It matters how you feel now. You're not interested in men, so you can ID as a lesbian regardless of how you felt in the past, which is another big one. So true. People always hang on to, but I did this in the past, but I had a crush on this guy, but I kissed this guy or vice versa. And it's like, yeah, 
that's cool, that happened, that was part of your journey. You may have been trying to figure things out, just seeing how things are. That's all part of life and growing up and experimenting and seeing what makes you feel good and what doesn't. It doesn't discredit your validity as a lesbian or whichever, whatever sexuality you are. It's just something that happened in the past and that's cool and it doesn't make you any less or any more of something at all. Then it goes on to say many lesbians have previously liked men at some point in their lives before realizing that they are lesbians. Now a common misconception is also that everyone is born knowing they are gay and that's not necessarily true. It can be because of both nature and nurture. And this is what I said earlier, if you think you feel attraction towards men but don't want to date or be with them and instead want to date and be with women, then you can be a lesbian. Lesbian doesn't need to mean only experiences attraction to women. It can mean only feels comfortable, only prefers and only prioritizes women and relationships with them, which is what I touched on before. You can be attracted to men, but not want to date or marry or have sex with them. Like, we are human beings who can identify an attraction to someone or that someone is attractive without wanting to do any more. It's possible and it happens. Then it also goes on to say many lesbians have found out this way that their attraction to men was in fact compet. Attraction is super complicated and it is. It is so, so complicated. It's possible to recognize that a man is attractive, but not be attracted to him. Whoa, stop, stop that. You are reading my mind. Hi. Attraction is often coerced by societal conditioning and some lesbians have hypothetical attraction to men due to compet, but don't actually want to date or have sex with a man. I get it. And it goes the same way. I have a fair few straight girlfriends who can find and do find other girls attractive, but the thought of sleeping with them, no, like it's not there. And same thing. The next section is conflicting feelings about men. Um, very, very similar. You can really genuinely have warm, positive, strong feelings towards men and they can still be compulsory heterosexuality. Compulsory heterosexuality is the assumption that any feelings you have towards a man must be attraction because society talks all the time about hetero love and attraction. So when you feel something towards a man, you think, oh, this must be what it's like. Then, as part of discovering your sexuality, you try to find ways that you find men attractive. That, whoa, yeah, okay, I feel that. You think, I'm not attracted to physical appearance, only personalities, or I only like feminine men. Or you find ways to make yourself aroused by men by imagining them in all kinds of unusual scenarios until you hit one that appeals to you. Now, I can get that. I can I can see how people would do that and try and see and like imagine them in different ways or like I have definitely been known to identify with the whole I'm more attracted to someone's personality rather than looks and that's how I am but I don't think that's attributed to being like under comp het or anything like that. I genuinely am in girls and guys. I'm more attracted to personality. It's something that makes them more attractive to me and vice versa. Like you could think someone's hot AF and then if they open their mouth and they're a total douchebag, my attraction to them plummets. But obviously in this am I a lesbian scenario, that makes total sense. This is something that's really difficult to recognize because in the process of figuring out your sexuality, you question how you feel and you come back with, well, I definitely have strong feelings for men and assume you're straight or bisexual. And, but another important thing to question is, have I correctly labeled and understood what this feeling is and am I certain that it's actually attraction? Um, society puts so much emphasis on the importance and intensity of heterosexual love and attraction that it's important to actively remind yourself that it's possible to love someone and have a deep interest in them without having romantic or sexual feelings towards them. Ting, ting, ting! And then we move into the nitty gritty of signs of comp het. Here we go, here they are. Above it, it has a little paragraph that says, if you relate to or identify with a lot of these things, I'd say it's worth an investigation into why so many of these things resonate with you. So here we go, the first little section is attraction to men. So I'm just gonna read out a few um, so deciding which guys to be attracted to, not to date, but to be attracted to. Um, if you're constantly testing your attraction to men, you like the idea of being with a man, but anytime a man makes a move on you, you get uncomfortable. Similarly, I don't like the reality of men, only the idea of being with men. I found this one interesting too. I like the idea of marrying a man slash being in a relationship with a man, but I can always pick out a reason to not want to date any man that is interested in me or any man suggested to me. So like having that whole idea of, yeah, like I want to end up with a guy, I want to marry a guy, but then when anyone 
actually shows interest, you're like, no, no. And like you pick it apart and have an excuse for it. I can fantasize about men and find men attractive, but thinking about realistically being with a man makes my stomach churn. Not gonna lie, I have had this next one before. Only developing attraction to a guy after a female friend expresses attraction to him. Yep, I've had that. <laughs> oh my god. And this one, but I think it's just because I'm a panicky mess at times. I like getting attention from men and being validated in my attractiveness, but the moment it goes from attention to an interaction, from flirting to asking out, I start panicking. Um, yes. <laughs> oh dear. You get crushes on just about every guy you're friendly with because there's no real difference between friendships and crushes to you. Now, Elena in her video really resonated with that and by jingos, when I read that and heard her say that and read it myself, oh, oh. This next one's interesting and I resonate with it, but not for the same sort of reasons, I don't think. But having such high standards that literally no guy meets them and feeling no spark of attraction to any guy who doesn't meet them. Now, I don't have the latter part of the sentence because I fall for guys just as easily as I fall for girls, but I have the highest of standards. Like, it's awful. And like, I end up dating and like, not settling, that sounds bad, but like, I date guys and then like I feel like I always think there's something that they could be doing better but I also think that's just like me needing to come back down to earth realizing I'm not a perfect human no one is and no one can treat you perfectly 100% of the time. I think that's just me but that was an interesting point. You're far more certain about being attracted to women than you are about being attracted to men. I definitely went through a stage of this not gonna lie, for a good year, I'm saying, maybe more. I was was so attracted to females and women and there was nothing else. It was like men didn't even exist. And this was just a part of me figuring out that side of me. That part has disappeared now. I see both men and women and I'm like, damn honey. But yeah, that was, I felt that. I, I have felt that, people. <laughs> This is the last one I'm going to read from that section. You want to date slash fall in love slash get married, have kids, etc. with a guy, but the guy you dream about is never specific and may as well be a cardboard cutout, aka a female, could be, could be anyone. That's interesting. You guys can read the rest of those points if you would like to. Now we move into relationships with men. Dreading what feels like an inevitable domestic future with a man, uh, or looking forward to an idealized version of it that resembled that resembles literally no male-female relationship you've ever seen in your life, never being able to picture any man you've actually met in that image. For those of you in a relationship, you have every reason to be happy in your relationship with a man, but you aren't, and everything is going really well, but something is missing and you can't figure out what. That would be a major indication. Thinking you're commitment phobic because no relationship, no matter how great the guy, feels quite right, and you drag your feet when it comes time to escalate it. Or jumping ahead and trying to rush to the comfortably settled part of the relationship with guys, trying to make a relationship a done deal without investing time into emotional closeness. Interesting. Your relationships with men are devoid of passion. Feeling like you have to have relationships with guys and or let them get serious in order to prove something, maybe something nebulous you can't identify. Getting a boyfriend mostly so other people know you have a boyfriend and not really being interested in him romantically or sexually. Wishing your boyfriend was less interested in romance and or sex with you and you could just hang as pals. After a breakup, missing having a boyfriend more than the specific guy that you were with. All very interesting. So now we move on to sex and intimacy with men. Having sex not out of desire for the physical pleasure or emotional closeness, but because you like feeling wanted. Or preferring to be a tease to feel wanted, but, f but feel like following through is a chore. Like you're like a tease because you want them to want you, but then you feel like actually doing the deed is like, ugh, here we go. Having to be drunk or high to have sex with men. The idea of kissing, cuddling, dating, and or having sex with men is really scary. <laughs> your fantasies with men still seem to somehow turn out a little bit gay. Maybe you're penetrating him. You don't have to look at his face. Don't want to look at his face. Want a threesome with another woman. He's very feminine, etc. It might be a straight fantasy, but you've altered it in a way straight people might not be interested in. And I'm sitting here totally wanting to peg my boyfriend, but that's just like my bisexual top energy coming through. 
I think. <laughs> You're thinking because you don't like or pursue sex with men, you must be asexual or vice versa with romance for men. Feeling weird or wrong calling your past boyfriends pet names or showing them PDA but gladly showing your girlfriends PDA, big one. Feeling numb or dissociating or crying during or after sex with men. Being bored with sex with men and not understanding what the big deal is that makes other women want it. I've experienced this before and not to discredit that emotion or feeling at all because that would mean a lot and that would just mean that a lot of girls are gay and like not into it. But it also comes down to having a guy that knows what they're doing and can make the sex good. If you're with someone that is shit at sex, I know it takes two to tango but if you're like trying and like doing all these good things and they're just not, it's gonna make you think it's super boring and not good. So obviously for some people, yes, it's because they're gay and they just wanna be having sex with a woman. For others, it would be the sex is just bad. There's a few more there, but as I mentioned, go and read them. Uh, early interest in women. Now this is going, so if you can hear the rain, I'm so sorry. It is pouring down outside and it's just coming on my window pouring down outside and it's hitting my window so I apologize um, but now we move into the most interesting section I believe which is early interest in women and I feel like I'm going to identify with a lot of this without a doubt not recognizing past slash current crushes on women until you've come to grips with your attraction to women for me is obviously my bisexuality but 100% I look back on people I found attractive in high school or like when I was in school, like people on TV shows and movies, women thinking they were so attractive and just go, oh my god, like, oh my god, they're so pretty, they're so pretty, and no one else was as enthusiastic about it. And I never questioned that because I thought it was just me being me. <laughs> okay. Being unusually competitive, shy, or eager to impress specific women when you're not that way with anyone else. Yes. Wanting to kiss your female best friend on the mouth for literally any reason. To practice for boys included. And that is exactly what happened to me, so don't come for me. Getting butterflies or feeling like you can't get close enough when cuddling a close friend. Female friend. Yes. Have had this happen, yes. Looking at a close female friend and feeling something in your chest clench up and being overwhelmed with love for her. Love you may read as platonic. Having had strong and abiding feelings of admiration for a specific female teacher or actor growing up that were deep and reverent. Having had an unusually close relationship with a female friend growing up that was different and special in a way you can't articulate. Thinking relationships would be simpler if only I were attracted to women slash my best friend who would be perfect for me if I slash she wasn't a girl. Okay, haven't we all felt that? No? Yes? Maybe? This one big time. When a female friend is treated badly by a man, having your protective thoughts turn in the direction of if I was him slash a man, I'd never do that to her slash my girlfriend. Had that thought a lot. Being utterly fascinated by any lesbians you know slash see in the media and thinking they're all ultra cool people. And I mean, they are. Just queer people in general are hella cool. But yes, Shannon Beveridge is literally the coolest person I know. And also this chick that I used to be friends with who was a lesbian, I could not dig her anymore. She was so sick. It was like, a, I want to be her and be with her or on top of her or underneath her. Like it was all of those things. And the last one on that list was feeling weirdly guilty and uncomfortable in locker rooms when your female friends are less clothed they, than they normally would be around men and being more and being more careful to not look. I honestly did not even realize that till now. Like that's not something I think back to, but reading that, I was so like that in change rooms. Like, and I didn't come out as bi or even know that I was attracted to women in that way till way, way, way past being in the situation of being in a, a locker room with other girls. But I always felt, yeah, super guarded and super like uncomfortable. That's the right word for it, uncomfortable. Okay, now we move into a section that says the straight version of you. Thinking that all straight girls feel at least some attraction to women. Don't they? Whoa, that was a loud clap of thunder. Um, thinking that your interest in seeing attractive women slash scantily clad women slash boobs is an artificial reaction caused by the objectification of women in media. Thinking it's objective and uncontested that all women are way more attractive than most men. Oh God, <laughs> here we go. Oh, oh lordy. Being a really intense LGBTQ plus ally and getting weirdly emotional about homophobia, but assuming you're just a really good ally and V empathetic. Me, my entire high school years, people. 
having had people think you were gay when you had no suspicion you were gay. A lot of you guys come to me saying you come out to people and they were like, yeah, I already knew and that's that sort of thing. Okay. Now we have exploring attraction to women. Feeling like you could live with a woman in a romantic way, even if you can't imagine doing anything sexual with a woman. Feeling like you could enjoy sexual interaction with a woman, even if you can't imagine having romantic feelings. Ooh, this one's interesting. Interacting with het sex slash romance in media by imagining yourself in the man's position or just never or rarely imagining yourself in the woman's position. Mm hmm Really focusing on the woman in heterosexual porn. Only feeling slash expressing attraction to or sexual interest in women when you're inebriated or otherwise impaired. This next one slaps. Seeing a relationship between two women elicit much stronger and more real emotional reaction than het relationships ever do. I see that. You have high standards for men you date and comparatively lower standards when it comes to women. Uh-huh. Ah, yes. Being mistaken for a couple with one of your girlfriends is exciting for you, and being mistaken for a couple with one of your guy friends elicits no reaction or feels weird or wrong. Then there's also a section here on gender feelings. Now, I don't feel like I can speak about that because I don't resonate with any of it, but again, feel free to read through it, um, because... Yeah, it just doesn't apply to me, but obviously as equally as important. Um, and then we have considering lesbianism, wanting to be a lesbian, but feeling like if you don't already know that you are one, you can't be. You think or fear that you might be a lesbian and find yourself somewhat constantly or desperately trying to prove to yourself that you are not. Suppressing your lesbian dreams because you think exploring that desire would mean you're a bad slash homophobic person using lesbianism, using lesbianness selfishly. Fantasizing about how much fun it would be to be a lesbian and just be with women or a specific woman but thinking that can't be for you. Worrying that some past attraction to men was actually real so you can't be a lesbian. Worrying that because you can't be 100% sure you're not attracted to men and can't be 100% sure you won't change your mind, you can't be a lesbian. Okay, now we're moving on to the final bit here. So it has a section of attraction versus comp head. So this is where we get into the deeper differences in definition. So you've got your nervousness and blushing. So the first section here is about nervousness and blushing, which we all know if we're around someone, we get nervous and we blush, we automatically think that is because we are attracted to them or embarrassed to be around them or something like that. And there is a clear difference and this makes total sense. So when you are actually attracted to someone and you blush or get nervous, you're nervous because you're excited to get to know someone. You find them attractive first and because you're thinking about your attraction to them, you get self-conscious because you hope they might like you too. Now, the same sort of thing in terms of comp head, you're nervous because you are aware that he is attracted to you and because he's paying such close attention to you, especially if he's pushing boundaries or getting too close into your personal space, you become self-conscious because you know he's watching you you blush because you're uncomfortable. And then we move into hypothetical attraction. So the actual attraction is, imagine a hypothetical future where you end up with a man. It feels exciting, makes you feel good and hopeful and happy and right. It's a nice feeling and comfortable to think about. It's reassuring. Then we have the compet side of hypothetical attraction. You imagine a hypothetical future where you end up with a man and it makes you feel uncomfortable, scared, sad, disappointed, and wrong. Um, you don't want to end up with a man even if you feel like you could. Then the Master Doc covers sexual fantasies and it says our culture places a big emphasis on sex when it comes to orientation. So this next part is all about, yeah, finding dudes attractive, like wanting to sleep with them and like finding bits of them, like wanting to actually do stuff with them. So actual attraction. When you fantasize about men, it's because you're attracted to their bodies or specific men or the idea of having sex with men. You imagine qualities of their body and you like the idea of what you're imagining. If you think about the fantasy later that day, you might feel like it's embarrassing, but you also feel like it's sexy. Ooh. Yeah, I feel that. This is the comp het version. When you fantasize about men, it's mostly just enacting a kind of narrative. More focused on movement than features, the men in your fantasies might be faceless or blank featured, or their bodies might symbolize some emotion. You don't really like the idea of what you're imagining. You might not even be in the fantasy, but instead another faceless woman might be. You might even imagine yourself as the man. It's really difficult to unroot compulsory heterosexuality. My simplest advice on getting through it is, even if you are attracted to men, you do not need to date them if you don't want to. But we move on to this last section that has basically, not a checklist, but it has several, several, several 
dot points on you might be a lesbian if and these are some of them and I'm just gonna reel off a few and again you can go through and have a look at this all yourself I will be putting it in the description box okay you might be a lesbian if you wish you were a lesbian so you could escape the discomfort of dating men men are okay in theory but terrible in practice this is one of my housemates favorite one-liners she's a lesbian. You feel like you could live with a woman in a romantic way even if you can't imagine doing anything sexual and vice versa. You lose interest in a man as soon as they seem interested in you. Very common. You can't imagine having a happy and fulfilling future with a man. You feel like you're performing your attraction to men for yourself and or other people. You expect relationships with men to be unfulfilling by default. You dislike being attracted to men in general. You only notice the attractiveness of a man when someone else points it out. You think that because you could survive dating, marrying, and or having sex with a man, you're attracted to men. Hint, you don't have to settle for just surviving. Big one. Lesbian or gay feels like the label for you, but you still doubt yourself for whatever reason. You're only attracted to fictional men or feminine men. You're repulsed by the dynamics of most or all real life male female relationships you've seen and or regularly feel like maybe it works for them but I never want my relationship to be like that. You think all straight women feel attraction to women at least to some extent. Hint, 100% straight women do exist. You find yourself wishing you were a lesbian because it'd be so much easier to just be with women for the rest of your life. Do you love them because they're your boyfriend or are they your boyfriend because you love them? If it's the first, you might not actually be attracted to them. You go through past memories to prove your attraction to men. But I had a boyfriend when I was 13. You know that lesbians exist, but you think you can't possibly be one of them because if you were, you'd know already. Very common. You don't like kissing, touching, having sex with your boyfriend or husband, or you're not attracted to your husband, boyfriend, but it must be because he's not the one for you, or another excuse. Most of your experiences with men are, were, men being attracted to you and you sort of going along with it. You have abstract crushes that you don't actually want to progress into romantic and or sexual relationships, also very common. You date men because it's what you're supposed to do and stay with them because you can't find a good reason to break up. You feel like you could have a romantic relationship with a man, but not a sexual relationship or vice versa. And lastly, your attraction to men feels less real than your attraction to women and it feels much more forced. And then there's a conclusion there that is super well written that sort of just summarizes everything. It's nice and short and succinct. Damn, does it make sense. It makes so much sense. I definitely learned some more things along the way there of my own thoughts and feelings that I've had due to Compet. I'm still confident in saying that I am fully and completely attracted to both men and women sexually and romantically. Um, date both, sleep with both, and would can see myself marrying both. But if you are watching this and you've labeled yourself as a particular sexuality or were even thinking you were, haven't come out, but you were thinking you were something and now this has changed your mind a bit or opened your eyes to some things or highlighted compet and the way it can affect how we feel and think. Yeah, I hope this video helped in some way. I'm presuming this will be a long one because I think I just did like four clips of 20 minutes. So you're welcome if you are still here. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a huge thumbs up. Share it around with your friends and fam anyone who you think might find it interesting or it could help in some way eee! thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in my next one bye